camera. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon. I'm standing here today with the man that stood with me, and today is about him. Sergeant Jason Spencer is a veteran that served in New York City during 9-11 and went on to serve two tours in Iraq. Some of the flaws in our criminal legal system are coming to, coming to light through this case. And it is unfair that someone that assisted a woman being attacked is having to defend himself in our system. Jason Spencer should be rewarded for his bra bravery, should be celebrated, uplifted, and not criminalized. Are you happy with the deal that well, ultimately, after reviewing, uh, ultimately after sir, ultimately after reviewing all the evidence, um, the prosecutor generously uh, presented an offer, which was to divert the case, to divert it from criminal prosecution, which will ultimately end in a dismissal, which was our position from the beginning. Can you explain just the program that was mentioned? What are the next steps? So it's a diversion program. What that means is. The case is diverted from the normal criminal tract for prosecution. Uh, right now, uh, since we put in our first stage application, there'll be a determination whether or not Mr. Spencer is eligible for the program. Basically a background check. Now, Mr. Spencer has no criminal record, so he is eligible for the program. So it's a mere formality. On the next court date, uh, we'll have some definitive answers in terms of the entry into the program and what those terms will be toward the dismissal. If you could say and spell your name for us. Sure, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, Romano, R-O-M-A-N-O. And Sergeant, is there anything that you'd like to say? No, no. Well, Mr. Spencer and I have, have, have talked beforehand. There, there are a couple of things. He's very shy. Uh, in spite of his bravery, he uh, shies away from uh, taking um, credit for what he's done. Uh, he believes that any other citizen should step up. If they see something, you do something. The other thing that was really important uh, that Mr. Spencer has conveyed to me throughout this whole process is the only regret he has is that he hadn't gotten there sooner to prevent the injury that occurred. Sure. Representative Khan, um, the um, citations that police got, um, just any comments on what where this stands now since that video of the incident hasn't been released, any further contact they've had with you about this whole thing? No, um, I will just say that in regards to the citations, um, there was a lot of information that wasn't presented well in that um, case, and it was disappointing for me to see that. Are you happy with what happened in court today? I think this is a, a process, and so far the process is going okay. I'm just um, unhappy about the fact that we even have to go through this process for somebody that decided to come to the defense of being attacked. Representative Khan, are you able to touch on just how you did since the incident happened? How have you been feeling about this? So it's it's a long process, and I'm I'm on a lifelong process. I have an injury that for now seems to be lifelong. My neck. I'm continuing to get treatment, so it's you know, a process. What does this say about? Um, deterring people in the future. Are, are we afraid that because of what's going on now, that if something were to happen, a woman being attacked, people are gonna be hesitant to make the move? That's a that's a great that's a great um you know point. And I think that's my fear that you know I think people should not fear coming to assist someone being attacked and people should feel um, confident in our laws because our laws do have self defense. We have self defense laws in Connecticut. Um, self-defense of others and people should feel confident that the law is on their side so I do fear that that would happen I would hope that it does not and hopefully um, us getting justice for Jason would allow for, for people to see that that's not the case. And, and if I can just speak to that when we were investigating the case we we realized that there were actually two other people who were present in the proximity of Representative Khan as she was being attacked and they did absolutely nothing it, 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 Mr. Spencer was actually down the block hearing her cries and he ran top speed down the block to save her and were it not for him the attack might have continued so, so today it, 
happens in two stages. Today was the application for diversion, and again, the state generously um, agreed and offered uh, the diversion program for Mr. Spencer, essentially agreeing to a dismissal. So on the next court date, uh, the judge will determine the term of that dismissal and how long it might take to, to, for that to happen. So we're, we're, it's mixed feelings about the result. On one hand, Mr. Spencer had to be arrested, and that, I don't think that needed to occur. Uh, there could have been discretion by the Harford police uh, and by the state's attorney's office on whether or not to issue a warrant for him. But then on the other hand, we do have this generous offer that they've made after the fact. So we're very pleased with that. Mr. Spencer, I think we were really interested in just hearing why you just felt the need to run down the block and help. May I? I think, I think that's okay. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 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 I think it's the best of my time. No, 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 no. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this one. Um, yeah. Please just, yeah, yeah. just, just describe what you heard. Everything. Yes, well, um, I took an oath to defend this Constitution, defend the country, defend all the citizens. And if I've served in a war zone fighting for the defense of others, I am home now. If I see someone needing help, I have to intervene. And I feel all citizens should do that. We should always look out for each other. So I just could not hear this lady screaming and, you know, fighting for her life and just stand there and not do anything. That's not how I was raised and that's not what the U.S. Army instilled in me, you know. I love this great country and I love all its citizens. Can you talk a little bit about the role of the Hartford police on that day, whether they were staffed appropriately or um, how they responded? That investigation is undergoing right now. I think I'm good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a wonderful day.